Welcome to the Artist Loft, the talk show for all artists. Join us each show as we spotlight a variety of different creatives, hosted by the Florida Arts Network with Richard Sosa and Frank A. Raffolo. Hey, hey, welcome lofties, back. How are you? Yes, Lofties. I really like I really like that name. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Thanks for for joining us on another episode of the Artist Loft. Uh, we are an arm of the Florida Arts Network, a 501c3 nonprofit for the arts. We have uh, two goals. One is to uh, help introduce uh, kids to the arts, or the arts to kids. You know, whichever way that goes. Um, and the other is to celebrate the artists that are already creating it, whether they be uh, actors, singers, uh, writers, uh, whatever. Right? Um, we, we're lacking in the arts. We really are. And, and we want to uh, build that community. But we need your help. That's right. And for as little as $75, you can advertise on this show. We also offer video services for trailers, reels, and commercials. If you need that, just contact us on our website. Uh, we have a event coming up on the 26th, which is going to be a networking event. It's free. It's at the Hilton Hall, Hilton Rooftop in Pompano Beach. Yeah, Pier Great 6. Venue. Yeah, Pier 6 Rooftop, Hilton. Right. And then you can also see me on the 15th at Wellaby Mo at the Wellaby Mall. I'm going to be part of the Read 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 Write Festival. I'm going to have a table there. So you can stop by my table and wish me and my wonderful wife, Christine, our 49th wedding anniversary. Yeah, 49 years. 49. Chris, I don't know how you've done it. Yeah, I, I really don't. I don't. <laughs> she's, she's just sitting there but shaking her head. I, I don't. You know, she must drink a lot. You know, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so our guest for today is a lovely young lady by the name of Gianni Adamo, who has written a book right here called Fearless, Fearless Love, Seven Tango Steps for Breaking Free from Narcissists and Predators. I'm, and I'm probably going to ask you about the tango steps, <laughs> where that, that all came from. So without any further, oh, there we go, look at that. So without any further ado, welcome to the show, Gianni. Thank you, Richard. I'm so happy to be here. Oops, fell down. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, fell down. Like, yeah. There's. Yeah. Okay. There we go. You got so, it. So. All right. So the book, by the way, is a gift from me to you. So it's your, all yours. Oh, thank you. You're so welcome. And the book is an Amazon bestseller, and it's also a Kirkus Review recommended book. And it, I also received the New Author of the Year 2020 uh, by Audio Audio. Bu audioreviewer.com. Um, but anyways, um, so the book is about recovering from toxic relationships, basically, and recovering from narcissistic abuse and sexual trauma. Um, and it's a journey where Elena is learning the Argentine tango, and she's learning lessons on love as she's learning. It's like an allegorical yeah. story. So the lessons on love represent the, lo the, the lessons in love between a man and a woman. Ah, okay, yeah, because I was wondering, what, what's the relationship between you know, that kind of trauma and, and tango? Yeah, so when I wrote the book, I actually myself was recovering from narcissistic abuse recovery, so I had a trauma. And it propelled, the trauma actually propelled me to the Argentine tango. I had been dancing salsa in the Latin uh, dances but then I got introduced the, to the Argentine tango. And because I was dealing with the post-traumatic stress, the Argentine tango was like magical for me. And it became really an instrument of healing in addition to the therapy and everything else that I was doing. But the Argentine tango, and then I did some research and I realized that it's very powerful. It, in, it includes the embrace, which is, is yes. the hug. Yes. And that releases the oxytocin, which is the love hormone. Mm -hmm. And then we introduce obviously the human touch and the human embrace in a touch, excuse me, in a safe environment, mm -hmm. in, in a safe zone for us. 
And then it's also movement and expression of the body. So it releases energy and, and self-expression. So there's so many components of the Argentine tango that actually is very healing and restorative. And while I was going through that journey of recovering from my trauma post <laughs> being involved in a toxic relationship, it really, um, because when you're going through PTSD, you've got confusion, you can't sleep, you've got anxiety and stress, you've got way too many negative, let's say, emotions that have been evoked and awakened. And then on the other end, when I was dancing the Argentine tango, I would feel loved, cared, um, I felt safe, I felt blissful. So all of that on the other side was like a mechanism to contain the stress that had come upon me through this mass confusion <laughs> after being involved in a toxic relationship. So that's how the book was born, out of that experience. Yeah, and, and it's, it's amazing because you look at any, any of the art forms, whether it be dance or singing or acting, or, and they're all so therapeutic. You know, I, I usually relate to the acting because, I mean, that's, that's my thing, right? Uh, and working out trauma through the characters that you develop. And you were working out your trauma through the dance. Mm -hmm. And the tango is a very powerful dance. Mm -hmm. It really is. I love watching the tango. It's, it's absolutely... Now, can I do it? I don't know. <laughs> I, could, I could try, but yeah, there's, well, there's a lot of components. Well, the Argentine tango is technically just a walk. As long as you're walking to the steps, or the steps are coming in like with the beat, then you're doing the tango. Okay. But then, of course, it gets more complicated, and it gets more intricate, and a lot more elaborate. For that, you'll need a lot of lessons. Yeah. But you don't need a lot of lessons if you just want to walk with your partner and lead them through that dance. Got, yeah, slow, slow, mm -hmm. quick, quick, slow. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that kind of that thing. Then you can add to it, well, it's like salsa. Salsa has, you know, basic steps, mm -hmm. right? But then you can add on to it, you know, all the, all the turns and the twirls and, and all that other stuff. But, but not only with the uh, dancing, you also, <coughs> you're able to heal yourself also with writing too. So you can get all that emotion right on the page too and, gets, and, and it, it comes out that way also. Frank, you hit the nail on the head. So I, I had many, multiple things that I was doing in order to heal. So I, not only was I dancing, and that, that was like an obsession. The brain just took over. It was obsessed with the Argentine tango. I went from dancing like salsa maybe five nights a week because I was taking lessons and learning to switching over to the tango, and it was seven nights a week. It's classes, so, uh, socials, uh, whatever. It was all and everything, the Argentine tango. But then I started writing, and in my heart, I wanted to write a book, and I really wasn't sure what kind of book I was going to write. I am a psychotherapist, and I focus on relationships. That's my expertise. So I was wondering if I was going to write a how-to book for married couples, you know, in the area of communication, uh, soulful connection, intimacy. But at the end of the day, I went and took a class, and I spoke to the instructor, and I said, I don't know what kind of book I want to write. But she's like, just start writing. It'll come, it'll come about. Yeah. As, yep. as you guys know, because you guys are artists, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't need so much uh, framework. You don't need a framework. You just need to start expressing your writing on paper. And eventually, a story starts to come out and it starts to unfold. Yeah. So I just started to write. Each week, I had a hand in a pa paper and read it to, uh, to the class. So each week, I had to write. And then next thing you know, there's a story emerging. <laughs> so that's yeah. how all of this came about. <laughs> yeah. And then sometimes you wake up at 3 o'clock in, in the morning, morning with an idea. It's like, oh my gosh, I got to get this down. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> how many times have we done something like that, right? Oh my gosh. So, okay, so you're, you're a psychotherapist, right? Yes. Were you... A psychotherapist while you were in a toxic relationship? Or? I love that question and the answer is yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes and more yes. Um, so I had moved to Florida um, right the same day I got divorced was the same day I was moving to Florida. It just coincided in that mm -hmm. way. So to me that was actually a sign that the day that I had set to move to Florida from New Jersey 
ended up being also the same day that the judge sat for my divorce. And I'm like, well, hallelujah, God is truly setting me free from this marriage and from leaving the state of New Jersey, single, after 15 years of marriage. And so the first relationship I got involved in was a sweet and charming sociopath who targeted me. At first, I didn't like him. I did not like him at all, so I ran. But it took about a year because he started targeting. And when you're involved with these individuals, they just show up. And unfortunately, with social media and Facebook, they know where you are, especially if you're RSVPing on all those social events. So they can yeah. track you down very easily. And that's <laughs> what was happening to me. He would show up at every event that I would be RSVPing to. And he was very sweet and charming. And even though I didn't like him, eventually he caught up. He, they can manipulate the brain and eventually trigger your chemistry. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're in love and you're bonded. And now it's hard to escape. Yeah. So yes, I was, but I was in a very vulnerable state. I was new to the state of Florida and I had just been divorced, which Oof. makes us extremely vulnerable. Yeah, and, and these people are masters of yeah, yeah. manipulation. Mm -hmm. right, and they prey on that too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, men and women, you know, either they, they can, they, oh yes. my gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they're targeting. They're targeting for money, they're targeting for sex, mm -hmm. they're targeting for entertainment, you name it. Your intellectual, emotional assets, and they the target for, for everything. power, too. Power and control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been in relationships like that before. And it's, it's, not, it's not easy. You know, and I, I remember I had gotten to a point one time, and, and I, I still kind of struggle with this a little bit. You know, it's like, why, why doesn't she love me? Do I deserve to be loved? Mm -hmm. Of course you, know, you do. I started, mm -hmm. But I started thinking that, mm -hmm. right? You know, it's like, oh, I, I, I don't deserve it. I don't, I don't deserve to be loved. You know, I'm unlovable. You know, this is, this is how you can get, you know, in, in this kind of thing. And my acting is what helped me through that because I worked a lot of that out through my characters. And it's kind of like a safe environment, like the mm -hmm. dance, right? It's a safe environment. If it doesn't work out with the character, ah, no big deal. It's a fictional character. So yeah, I, I I I get it. It's 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 crazy. So now, so you're a th you're a psychotherapist, yes, right? and you're in this toxic relationship. Mm -hmm. That must have been your mind must have been like a crazy battleground. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you could say that. Because like you have all this stuff that you know in your head, right? And, and you're experiencing all this negative stuff in real life, and, and you're like, wait, what, what's going on? Yeah, but there's also this thing called love, which you do get blinded by the love. Um, love is the most strongest, powerful force on the planet. It is stronger than fear. Mm -hmm. uh, thus, I do what I do for a living because I do support couples to e emerge from limiting beliefs, beliefs and trauma and and stories that we tell ourselves in order to open the pathways to really connecting and bonding and finding harmony in their relationship. So love paves the way. Right. So unfortunately, when we're in involved with a narcissistic individual, we have been manipulated and so has our chemistry. So now our body and our biology is working against us because we're, when we're in love, we're always in hope. We're always in faith. We always see the best. We're always yeah. expecting the best and we're expecting that things will turn around and, and the rainbow will come out. So all of that's still coming and, in, and it's very powerful, which then causes some conflict because then another part of us is like, well, this is really weird. Why did this person just say that? Why did they just do this? Yeah. Yeah. Um, why did they just disappear? Because many of them, you know, they appear and reappear and they have absences mm. and they control your life. But yet you can't ask them about where the heck they were yesterday or last night or yeah. because you're not entitled to know anything, only what they allow you to know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So you do enter a battleground internally. Um, but it was, it, for me personally, it wasn't until I was neck deep and PTSD, and I think it, that's the problem. Most of us will stick it out until we're so traumatized that we have to get the heck out, or we're abandoned, because they usually are very infamous about abandoning yeah. their partners for the next victim anyway. So. Yeah. Wow. And, and, okay, and so somebody who's in a relationship like that for, 
you know, many, many years. Um, now, you, you said that, that love is, is a very strong force, but could, could there also be, um, now I'm not a psychologist, I've only, I've only played one on TV, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. But, um, like maybe a mild form of like Stockholm Syndrome or something like that? Uh, you mean the victims? Yeah. Yeah, some of us get PTSD and trauma bonded. I got trauma bonded. In fact, one of the best books that I read was on the betrayal bond, which is one of the references that I have in the back of that book. Uh, the, so for anyone who is still trauma bonded, if they want to read a great book on that, it's The Betrayal Bond by Patrick Harnes. That book was such an eye opener for me and all of my clients that come in with uh, PTS PTSD because they were involved with a narcissist. That's the first book I asked them to please, please, please read. They've got to read it because it really highlights how we're trauma bonded, uh, yeah. the Stockholm syndrome, to the narcissist. Um, and, and unfortunately, for most of us, this comes from a past trauma, from an attachment trauma from childhood. So not only do we have to heal the trauma that just happened, but we also have to heal the trauma from the past that made us also vulnerable to this type of predatory individual. Yeah, and, and find the, the proper balance so that you don't go to the other extreme. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, now I don't trust anybody. I don't want anything to do with anybody. You don't want that either. Yeah, but right? sometimes you do go there because <coughs> your brain takes, that. that's part of the PTSD. Your brain doesn't know who to trust, what to trust, and yeah. especially yourself. You no longer even trust yourself, which is the biggest horror. You, yeah. can't, you cannot even trust in yourself anymore. So you have to go through the process of healing, the layers of betrayal, because that's what a narcissist does. They betray us at multiple levels, including having us, the victim, betray ourselves through self-abandonment. Because now we're abandoning our own truth and yeah. what's right for us to accommodate this individual who's only abusing and exploiting us. It's, it's crazy, crazy, isn't it? All right. Oh, my gosh. I can't, I can't believe how time is getting away from us. Yeah, we got to um, break. Yeah, we're, we're going we're gonna, to uh, break for commercial right here, and we'll be back with Gianni uh, right after. Frank A. Raffolo, a renowned author and screenwriter known for his books such as 10048, Blue Falcon, Memoir of a Soldier, and his latest, Samuel of Sarah. Check out his website, frankarafolo.com, for more info or purchase his books on Amazon. What's up, everybody? This is Ajo Armate, but most of you know me as Esteban Julio Ricardo Montoya de Rosa Ramirez from The Sweet Life of Zach and Cody. I just wanted to give a shout out to my man, Richard Sosa. He is one of the best acting coaches that I've had the pleasure to work with, and he's actually worked with me and my program for many years, and I highly recommend this guy. So if you have an opportunity to work with him, what are you waiting for? Now, get out of my face. Esteban Julio Ricardo Montoya de Rosa Ramirez. I'm out. And we're back. Yeah, and we're back. All right. So, so we've been talking about your book, right? Um, and your experiences, what led you to the book and everything else. But you have other plans for the book, though. I do. <laughs> I do. In fact, as I wrote the book, there were multiple things going through my mind as I wrote this book. The first one is, yes, I wanted to fully understand what actually had happened to me, because that's the whole thing. You're actually like a detective as you're writing this book. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to figure out and put the pieces together of your life and put everything back so your, your life can come back to like being centered again. But as I wrote that, I figured I not only wanted to write um, a classic for healing of narcissistic abuse and sexual trauma, I also wanted to turn the book into a movie or a film or some sort of series. So I want some sort of visual representation of the book, and that's very near and dear to my heart. 
Yeah, maybe like a documentary or something like that, or or a series a reality can, show or whatever shows up. That the, whatever door the Lord's opens up for us, that's that's what I would be walking through. Yeah, I'm yeah. open. All right. Well, I'm. You know, we're we're here to support you one one hundred percent. You know, I would I would love to see that. Would you be starring in the in the movie? Or? <laughs> Everyone asked that. <laughs> if there was a film around this book, I would play the therapist part because there is a therapist, but I would not be playing the the main protagonist. I could do yeah. the therapist part because that's easy for me. I could do the therapist part. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and but it, you know, it's it's kind of difficult to play yourself. In a, in a film, I think one of the worst things that a director can tell an actor is just be yourself. Be yourself. Oh yeah, gosh. because then you start second guessing everything that you do and like, wait, do I walk like that? Do I talk like that? Do I chew gum like that? You know, do I do this like that? It, it, you would be too much in, in, in your, your head. In your head. Mm -hmm. But with the, with the therapist, I think, even though you are a therapist, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that that would be an easier, an easier thing for, your, for you to yeah. do. So, yeah. So, um, you've had some success with, with this book? I think so. <laughs> uh -huh. um, yes, I would say I have had wonderful success. Like I said, it became an Amazon bestseller. It stayed as on the top uh, bestseller for three weeks in a row when it was first launched. And I received multiple awards for the book. And the, the title, Fearless Love, the title is actually From Love Trauma to Fearless Love. My practice is called fearless love and that name came about after my divorce I realized that if we as human beings can learn to love beyond our limits and our limiting beliefs would be our limits would be limiting beliefs fears um, and rules that we make around love and those things limit us where we are not fully able to express love and of course a lot of that comes from traumas childhood experiences that were negative or yeah. just family members not modeling proper behaviors for us and they're modeling all toxic things and we're carrying that on thinking it's natural and normal and it's not. So that's where all that comes from. So my practice is really geared towards individuals and couples who want to break through their limiting beliefs, their relationship glass ceiling, let's say, mm -hmm. and really move into a place where they are really flowing with their partner, with their spouse, in a, in a place of harmony, being able to communicate effectively, being able to have soulful connections, and to be able to have passion and a passionate intimacy or intimate life. Yeah. Um, I think those are the three main things that I really go after with my couples. And I know that they love working with me. I have great, great um, relationship with most of my clients that come through my practice. Um, and they usually stay with me a while because they realize that they're so <laughs> successful with the goals they set that they actually set new ones and want to work on new things um, in their lives. Where, okay. where is your practice located and how, can, and how can they get in touch with you? I offer online uh, therapy and, and, and couples intensives and, and couples retreats. And I am out of Delray Beach, Florida, and they can find me at uh, fearlesslove.net. And I actually, I don't, I'm not sure if we're, if we're kind of coming to the end of this, but I do have a, a gift for your audience. Um, I have a, a, a document that I wrote called Seven Relationship Fears That um, Keep ha uh, Successful People From Being Happy. It's an easy read. And it's a downloadable on my website, which is um, cool. fearlesslove.net. So anyone who wants to know further about the things that we do to sabotage our relationships and our love life, this document will really help them to understand some of those fears and some of those limiting beliefs. Yeah, because in so, in so many instances, we're, we tend to be our own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we, we have to get out of our own way sometimes to, if, if we want to succeed in, you know, whatever it is that, that we're doing. And so, let me ask you, how, how does it feel when you, when you see this couple that comes to you and they're just a mess, right? And then all of a sudden you see them working, through, well, not all of a sudden, it takes time, right? Mm -hmm. But you see them working, working through that. That's got to give you a, an incredible sense of, of, of satisfaction. It's very rewarding. I know most people, when I tell them what I do for a living, are like, <coughs> are you crazy? I would <laughs> never be able to do that. 
And for me, it's like, it's a joy. It's, first of all, it's my calling. God yeah. has given me a calling on this planet, and it's this one to serve humanity in this capacity of the love and marriage and relationships and increasing the love and the bond um, and the intimacy. So, no, it's extremely rewarding for me. And, yes, I do get some couples that are on the verge of divorce, but not everybody comes in at that level. Thank God, so many people are more proactive, and they're like, hey, we've had perpetual issues that we can't resolve, or we really have issues communicating, or, you know, they have a low sex situation in the, in the yeah. home, and they're not really having the intimacy that they, they want to have. So they'll come in to work on specific issues. And so not everyone's- been doing this? I have been doing this for over 15 years, probably wow. like 16, 17 years. I kind of stopped counting somewhere. <laughs> yes. have, you, have, you fe have you seen any change in the couples where they're coming in sooner than later? Are they more pro proactive now than they have been? Or have you, are you seeing them before the end stages now? Uh, or before were you seeing them at the end stages before? Or is it, has it been about the same? Yeah, I have seen changes. First of all, my beginning stages were in New Jersey, and there I got a lot of phone calls from the husbands, which is wonderful, because the psychotherapy world and the mental health world, usually it's the women who go to therapy, and they decide they want to drag their husband or something like that. But, yeah. um, but when it comes to couples therapy, a lot of times the men are very fully engaged to going to couples therapy and a lot of times they're the ones saying honey we need to go to couples therapy and sometimes they come in years later and they're like I was telling my wife this years ago yeah. so in, in couples <laughs> therapy so it's not always the case where it's only the women who want to go to therapy so that's the good news and that's exciting so today I would say again because I've seen the men very engaged even early on in my career I wouldn't say that today I'm seeing more men wanting to come into couples therapy I would say that's probably stat like the same across the board um, a non-narcissistic guy because unfortunately we do have some of those high narcissistic ones who don't want to come to therapy yeah um, but guys with empathy and compassion and love and are committed they're usually the first ones that want to go to therapy so that's a wonderful thing so i work really well with guys many times they'll even stay on with for, with me for individual therapy because they realize i understand them i get them i speak their language and i'm from new jersey so you know like i could speak straight and to the yeah. point <laughs> yeah so, so it's easy for me to, to you know to connect um but uh, in addition to the men are engaged, and that I've seen across the board. Um, I think today, because we've made it so much more, like there's mo so much more awareness about emotional intelligence, I think a lot of the guys today have, uh, have increased their emotional intelligence. So I am so honored and happy when I see couples and the guy can actually speak from his heart and he's not like, doesn't have a deficit around yeah. his emotions even though we still have some of those guys yes we do but yeah but today like the younger generation the guys can speak from their hearts and they can speak about what they're feeling and express it or label it properly and i love that because that's a much faster path through you know through whatever issues are, they're having yeah all right well well we just got the signal yeah <laughs> we, it's the end of the fun time yeah i know it it, it always amazes me how quickly this show goes by. I mean, it's, yeah, I, I know it's only 30 minutes, but oh my gosh, it seems like two. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, Gianni, thank you so, so much for being on the, on the show. You get some interesting Wonderful stuff. Guest. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to dive into this book. Oh, good. Well, yeah. it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Frank. And thank again, you. for your audience, if they're interested in knowing more about me, they'll find me at fearlesslove.net and they can actually download the PDF on the seven uh, relationship fears keeping successful people from being happy. There you go. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. And again, this, this show, uh, we, we bring on all kinds of guests, all kinds of interesting stuff. And we want to we wanna continue doing this. Um, but we need your help, guys. We really, we really do. Um, we, we need uh, donations. Uh, yeah, please are, consider going to our website. Uh, yeah. We do have a GoFundMe active right now, so if you can donate one, ten, or five dollars, or as much as you can. If you can't, just refer your friends to our website, and 
Or one five and ten thousand. Or one five know. and ten thousand. Yeah. <laughs> we are a five hundred one c three, so all all your your donations are tax deductible. Right. right. Now make a quick correction. I said I'll be at the Wellyby Mall this weekend. It's the Wellington Mall in uh, Wellington, Florida, from uh, four from eleven to eleven o'clock in the morning to four in the afternoon. There'll be about thirty five authors there. So stop on by. Oh wow, that's a lot of writers out there. A lot of writers. Holy smoke! All right. Well, thanks for joining us once again, and we will see you in two weeks. Two weeks. Thank you for watching The Artist Log. Make sure to tune in next time for another great show. A show that was produced by Ant Media Productions and hosted by the Florida Arts Network with your hosts, Richard Sosa and Frank A. Ricolo.